the art of storyboarding is basically creating stills that help to show what's going to happen on screen or on the page and it's mostly used in preparation for film and like any type of illustration perspective is an important part of the drawing I want to explain to you how to use a free 3D software program for perspective for storyboarding. For those of you who want to know what software I'm talking about, it's SketchUp at SketchUp.com. It's free and you can download it at uh, SketchUp.com and install it. What I mean by perspective is the use of measuring vanishing points. Now a perspective is basically here you can see here's the horizon line here and optically when you look around the real world things that are closer to you look bigger and things that are farther away look smaller until they reach the vanishing point where they where they they get so small you can't see them anymore. In illustration we find the vanishing points and then draw everything and you can see how it determines the shape of objects in optical 3D space. So this is this this here is a two-dimensional image but it's it's an optical illusion. It's it's imitating what objects would look like in 3D space by having them bend towards the vanishing point. And so anytime that you're drawing a scene it's good to be aware of the properties of perspective and to practice them. All the objects in the scene kind of snap together and pull the eye in when they're complying to the laws of perspective. You can see here this is a real life image and, and the, the perspective lines have been drawn in to show the way optically everything bends towards the vanishing point. Most of my know-how about using 3D software for perspective for illustration and storyboarding is what not to do, when not to use it. Th this is a drawing that I did where I just guesstimated all the perspective. So you can see that the building here, the lines follow. There's a vanishing point uh, somewhere off page, and that they're there. I'm guesstimating the vanishing point, and a lot of it comes from practice and the the ability the ability to go ahead and work with perspective on the page as opposed to 3D software. And because I was going to only use the exterior building and street here one time, it would have been a waste of time for me to build a 3D set in software for this scene when it was just a, a one-off. I was just going to draw, you know, one storyboard. And here you can see that the rail here complies to perspective and and th this is all perspective that I did within the drawing program. These are all, okay, th this one here I did, this is where I went ahead and, and started using the 3D software. One reason I did it is that I'm going to do many storyboarding taking place in, in on you know, th this exterior scenery. So I, it would be useful for my time to go ahead and build a 3D model. As you can see, here's the 3D model that I built here. And I have rules taped up on my wall that say no texturing. Now, now really, the one main thing about 3D software is it is a world of its own and you could easily get it, it it can be so complicated and involve so much that that you really have to decide you know if you want to use it for 
for perspective for drawing I don't texture the models limit the detail I might add some windows but as you can see here I I do not add the bricks I do not add in all the windows I leave I'm working with I'm, I, my idea is that it's sort of like virtual blocks to get an idea where everything is at. And the you can see that when there are people in scene, I, this is not the person that's going to be in the scene. This is just kind of a placeholder to show how large my characters are going to be. When I go back, I can start to add in some of the details. The thing that you don't want to get sucked into is where you're spending so much time with with all the possibilities of 3D software you really want to decide to limit what you're going to use it for and use it simply now basically once I've worked out the scene I can go in and export it as a 2D graphic and you know save that image and then from there I can bring that image into my drawing software and draw on top of it. Now as you might notice here I have what look you know these palm trees and and these lamp posts I didn't make these. One amazing thing about SketchUp is that you is you can go ahead and import models. There's a button here on the toolbar where you can do a search if you need I usually follow it with low poly and then whatever I'm looking for. Low poly car and these are models that you can use that you can go ahead and click and import it into your your scene and start using it and I don't need to find the exact model. These are all placeholders. These all let me know the general size that I'm going to draw the eventual image and this is huge. They have very expensive 3D storyboarding software with 3D capabilities where they have a very limited, you know, amount of people and cars and lamp posts and trees and basic everyday objects that you can use for your storyboarding. And with SketchUp free software, you have people who have made these models who are willing to share them with you and you don't need to look for the exact model <clears throat> you can use it to find a basic mock-up mock of the scene you want to create and then use the powers of your your drawing skills to take it next step and this is the way to create the best scenes. 3D software is very compelling to just work in 3D software but I've learned in the long run it's much funner to to use it on a very basic simple level and then finish the take it go back into using the, the power of my own imagination and drawing skills to to continue creating the fictional world I want to because in the long run I found that it's the easiest fastest way to work and I can get what I can get the results I want much better and the nice thing about using SketchUp is that you have full control you can say well would it would the image look better if I you know shifted the camera a little bit this way would the image work better if I if the camera was a little bit higher up and you can go and you can fine-tune the way you want the image to go you can save the different camera settings and then change them if you know and make and and save them so i hope that was helpful and i am um, please if you have time go and check out my illustrated story project that i'm working on at solomation.com and also um, to encourage me to make more of these tutorials hit the like button leave a comment and subscribe and I hope that your illustrated graphic 
storytelling goes very well and have a good day.